All right, so everyone that's on board, and also for those of you uh, listening to this later on and recording, welcome. Uh, this is just an update, and also we're going to be covering just a couple of administrative things. Um, the plan of action is reviewing the rocketry program for the wing, talking about the November rocketry weekend, which is coming up really fast, and then a quick administrative update at the end. Uh, CAPS rocketry program is it's pretty simple. It's a little hard to figure out. Some people have a lot of questions about how the CAP cadets actually get their badges. And that's something that I feel needs to be addressed. Um, there's not a clear cut way of assessing a cadet's progress unless you're really, really familiar with the uh, material and the assessment sheets for each stage. So in your units, uh, make sure your AEO office, your AE officer has a good familiarity with that. If not, you can ask me, or you can download the PDF. The PDF is pretty clear. There's a problem though, like for Hawaii, we have the issue of uh, not being able to launch for altitude. Also, there's other um, regions where they don't even have powered launches, or not regions, but other other wings or cadet squadrons or squadrons that try and launch, then maybe they can't have a powered launch at all. So they've made some provisions in the kind of, I, I don't even want to call it regulations, in the guidelines for the rocket badge, some provisions for addressing those needs. And they get a little odd at times. Um, there's water rocket, there's static rocket, there's air rockets. So some of this I'm not completely familiar with. I'm completely familiar with enough to get any of our cadets in the Hawaii wing through to the uh, rocket badge. So the three stages to get the badge are the Redstone, Titan, and Saturn. These stages are done uh, in the e-services online learning section. The cadets should know how to get there. If not, you can go in and check it yourself. There's a test for each stage, that's an online assessment. Then there's a practical portion for each stage, which has to be done by the AEO in the unit. That practical session also follows the stages. Um, this is where it gets a little uh, not so simple. Uh, the first stage, we need two launches, Seltzer, Walker, Water, or Goddard. There's also different air rockets that they're possible or rubber band powered rockets or, I mean, there's a lot of different things. I'm okay if you're an AEO and you, you know, have a sling rocket or an uh, air rocket or a water rocket or a seltzer rocket or whatever, all those things to me as activities and launches satisfy that requirement. But, you know, you'll have to make your own, uh, you know, your own choices in that regard. The second stage can have powered rockets and at this point, the actual, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to say regulations, but the guidelines for the assessment are that we have a commercial powered rocket. The STEM kit one satisfied it. That's why I put the alpha in here. The alpha rockets are the STEM kit rockets. And then you can either have another rocket that the cadet builds, a historic static rocket that the cadet builds, or an air-powered rocket that the cadets build. This is a little bit vague in this. Um, I'd leave it at your discretion, but basically from my understanding and in interacting with you know, people at region or national, this is the stage when they're supposed to do the STEM kit and launch their alpha rocket. So it's very simple. Uh, this, the build is quite simple. And they, there's guidelines for doing a static rocket and then you present that static rocket to your squadron. And that means that it's a historic vehicle that you talk about and you understand something about. So in both the educational component, um, in the material that they have to do their LMS assessments, um, there's you know guidelines as to what they could talk about in that regard. Now. I personally don't feel that I have a lot of cadets who are really good at building plastic static models. And I think that's kind of a legacy thing. Uh, when I was a kid, obviously we built, you know, P-51s with 
glue that everyone sniffed and got high on and it was not particularly the best thing to do and no one does it anymore unless you really are into that kind of thing so you know read it and have your discretion about that for me stage two is launching building and launching an alpha rocket stage three is what we have a challenge with here in uh, hawaii the only thing that basically in a clear-cut way satisfies the stage three requirement and allows the cadet to move on to get their badge is launching a rocket with a three ounce payload to over 300 feet this is a rocket that they need to build themselves and uh, i'll get more into that as we go on uh yeah and one of the cool parts about the rocket program is just safety so I, this is one of my favorite rocket safety videos. You can see that they've built a water rocket. Uh, the water rocket is constructed out of two full water cooler containers. It's probably some engineering students there in the UK or maybe Australia. Uh, this goes on and on. One thing that you notice is that for this volume of pressurized gas, uh, standing there with a bicycle pump is going to be a rather futile activity. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and advance to the fun part. I'd like to see this actually work. It'd be fun to build something like that and actually see it launch. But you see the safety equipment. It's just a face mask. And the person filming this was probably a little close. So, yeah, this is not exactly uh, what we want to see in CAP. I like to show this because, hey, there's no fire involved, there's nothing, but you should have a lot of safety issues going on here. And doing a proper risk management for any kind of rocket launch activity, even if it is just water rockets, should be done correctly. That was definitely not. And next is we move on to the November rocket weekend. Um, we have a tentative schedule. The weekend itself is being coordinated with the uh, cadet power team. I'm providing a lot of guidance for them and I'm willing to come in and do a lot of the teaching and assistance in the building. The activity itself looks like it's going to be quite popular so we may have a lot of attendance. We'll need a uh, quite a bit of hands on deck for this. <clears throat> the schedule, tentative schedule, is that we have on Saturday uh, a build party after a short lecture. This rocket build party only leaves enough time for basically cadets at stage two to get their alphas done. Cadets at stage three will be working with me to try and get their uh, their stage three lift rocket done. An hour and a half for the stage three lift rocket is probably not enough time. So we're planning on having this be a uh, in-house lunch and those that aren't complete can continue to build their rockets until we load up the vans and head out to Blaisdell Park. And we're going to launch at Blaisdell. I'm gonna have quite a few launchers uh, depends on how many people sign up. We'll basically be able to accommodate everyone. We'll bring out the water rocket launcher. We'll bring out the powered rocket launchers. We'll have different stations. We'll split up into a lot of different groups. Um, you know, this is a, this, everything about this activity is very scalable. We don't have hard numbers for who's going to attend it at this point. Um, the only issue is probably the materials if we get a lot of people involved. Sunday is going to be, at, at the first part, there was a question of whether Sunday would be leadership education or not. Um, apparently, it's going to be AE education, which is fine with me. I'll uh, try and coordinate. I'd like to have uh, some of our unit AEOs come in and teach one or two of these classes, and then we'd have an activity that's just fun. Perhaps we'd teach people how to do a proper water rocket build where you connect two bottles together so you get a quite a larger vehicle. Um, 
there's a pretty simple technique for doing that and I can demonstrate that and then we can have a launch. We could have a, a launch just in the back of the wing headquarters as long as it doesn't go very high. Uh, the things that we're gonna need, we need to have rockets, motors, volunteers, and donations if we can get them. The key is uh, we're not gonna be able to provide rockets for everybody, but we do have a bunch I mean, our unit has some, we can order some. The Alpha rockets are quite cheap. The problem with Alpha rockets is that in the STEM kit, they give you a big block of motors. That's great. If you go down to the hobby store and buy the motors, it's quite expensive. Uh, so if you have motors in storage in your unit and you bring them on, that'd be very cool. Donate it to the weekend. Uh, we will need a lot of volunteers if we end up with a lot of cadets. So, you know, and it's going to be fun. So I don't think we'd have too many people not wanting to come to this. And then the donations to cover additional costs and those additional costs would be this. So I need to, I really will need to have, go back to your units, find out what cadets are at their stage three. Um, the best stage three clearance rocket, at least in my book, the cheapest solution and the easiest way to go forward is with the SD's Lodestar. Um, right here, you can see it on Amazon. It's less than 20 bucks. The engines for this are about it's about $20 for three launches, I think. Uh, so this is comes in at a reasonable rate and we can actually load these with the three ounces and get them in the air. And, Martin, uh, I've got a question. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> do, do you, um, over at HQ, do you have engines or should we just be ordering them now? I and personally do order? not have enough engines to supply for everyone, yeah. but I will be ordering a block of engines for the alphas and a block of engines for these load stars. So, uh, yes, your question is if you're bringing a lot of cadets, I'm going to need you to have, um, the material support. Okay. And this is Chad. Hey, Martin. Yes. I have here at the Kona, I have alpha three. Um, I've got some motors, I've got some rockets. Um, got to see if they're all in there, but um, I've got Alpha 3. I'll bring what we have here. Um, one box says there's 12 in there. I got to verify it. Yeah, so that's that fantastic. Will help out. Exactly. Okay, if anybody, if, if anybody has their uh, leftover uh, rocket stem kit materials, it'd be great to bring it in at this time because I'm I'm. I'm almost positive we're gonna have enough cadets there where it will burn through all of that STEM stuff. Um, that's the stage two requirements. I think a lot of kids are probably set at that level. They need to finish their couple of launches with the alpha rockets. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know how many cadets in our wing have a lot of uh, you know, uh, construction skills. And the difference between building the alpha, which is about a half hour class, if you're, you know, got some glue gun experience and some you know scissor experience and, and building this load star is kind of you know a little bit night and day this requires a little bit of skill so. okay also um we're gonna have um just to let you know martin we'll have um sandwiches so they can uh, continue through lunchtime to build and have sandwiches so it's less mess and they can continue working on their stuff do you know how how long it takes from wing headquarters to Blaisdell on a Saturday? Uh, there shouldn't be any traffic in between wing headquarters and Blaisdell, so less than 20 minutes. But I think we blocked in okay. about 35, 40 minutes for loading, organization, and transport. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about this? Uh, uh, this is the kind of thing that I actually really need, uh, you know, Wink Matters or AEOs. I need cadet stage three attendance numbers, like as soon as you can get them to me, because this part I've got to order and I kind of need to order it right away. And it's not so cheap, so I don't want to buy a bunch of extra. So if that's clear. Martin, this is Tony. Yes. I just ordered this stuff last week. So the, the, the cheapest I found for the, uh, the Alpha Rocket, the 12 pack was a $78. And for the 12 pack of the uh, Lodestar 2 Rocket was $141. Okay. 
Right. And then I got the rocket, uh, the motors also associated with those at $47 and $70 for a, a pack of 24. So right. if, uh, if you take a look on eBay, I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised with prices. Uh, so you found that the eBay motor prices were much better? Were much better, and I got everything... I got I got three of the items within two days. Yeah, the third item, the fourth item took uh, three days, so awesome. it, it came really fast. Okay, well we'll so, look into that for sure. Yeah, just FYI, and yep. uh, I, I think um, Wheeler is launching this weekend. If not, we can delay our launch to next weekend and, and coincide with you guys. Oh yeah, it's totally up to you. I mean, I'm I'm figuring that you know this is a this is an opportunity for everybody to go ahead and. Uh, and have a blast, but it doesn't preclude you guys not doing your own rocket launches at all. So, oh, that's fast. Three. Copy. Hey, Martin, it's uh, Landon. Hey, we've got uh, boxes upon boxes of motors here and some other gear. So, we're doing an inventory tonight. I'll get you a detailed inventory of what we've got and what we'll bring to help, uh, help defray some of those costs. Ah, that'd be great. Yeah, especially for the for the Alpha stuff. I know that comes with the stem kit. Most every unit has like some of these engines lying around and some of these rockets lying around. That would be fantastic if you can find out how much you have in storage. Yeah. So we'll I'll have a uh, inventory count for you tonight. Ah, uh, thank you very much. That's really really good. All right. So that is anybody else have any questions about the uh, November two three uh, airlift rocket weekend update? Martin. Yes. I have got I've got two packs of Alpha Three. They're twelve in a pack, and it looks like they're all there. So that's twenty four of them right now that I have. And also I have a what is it a eight dash three motor uh, the mo the little cartridges. Yes. I have two of those that are bulk. There are like twenty four of them in there. Uh, that's perfect. I've so got then you, a, you've got a complete STEM kit or two right there. Yeah, probably several. Um, uh, so I've got a lot of stuff that I will bring over with us. Fantastic. That's so, awesome. so I've got at least 24, depending on how many kids we have. Um, the sign up um, email went out. Um, make sure your cadets start signing up so that way we have a, a total count. And then we can get this all coordinated. Yep, I would encourage everyone uh, that's on, please get in your units and make sure that they understand that, you know, it's not a super short fuse on this, but we'd like to accommodate as many cadets as possible. We can go up to, I mean, a lot, but we just need to know ahead of time. All right, so that concludes the uh, update for the, no, the, the rocket airlift weekend. And now I just need to do a couple administrative things. First on the list is that uh, Region is going to sponsor an AE workshop in Alaska for the days of March 11, 12, 13. Uh, they're going to have quite a number of people coming to this. Um, Alaska has a bazillion AEM members, so that's why they're putting this workshop on in Alaska. Um, it's open to our AEOs, and there's going to be five classrooms. Uh, you know, they're going to limit the size of this to 120, and I think we should send me. Um, then now we're going to head to e-services, um, which means I just put an image up that you can't read. I'll live switch to e-services. So that <clears throat> concludes the actual PowerPoint presentation. Get back into my crazy desktop. Uh, the first thing to go over is the PAO and the activity report. This is the activity report. I know I say this ad nauseum. The ones that were due are activity reports due in the year of. So that's fiscal year 2019. The only one missing still is from the 9th. I'd like to point out that in the activity report, there is a section for the model rocketry program. It's a little bit confusing as to what causes completion in here. If you have cadets that are coming, 
this November Rocket Weekend, you will be able to put this down for your next year's activity report as completion, and you'll be handing out badges. And this would be a good thing to do. It's one of those metrics that we'd like to send up to region so they know that we're being very uh, AE positive in this wing. And then I'm going to switch over quickly to the PAO. The wing, I mean, the, uh, the PAO that you need to submit is for the coming year. So that's 2020. And the only one missing still is for the night. So we are almost complete. Green, green, green across the board. We just need to get submissions from the ninth. And then my last bit of administrative stuff is actually uh, here. Uh, Martin, for that, that that's live for the ninth. You're saying we don't we don't have it in? That's correct. He told me he did it, so I'll follow up. Yeah, please do. I know he was kind of out for a little bit, so. Yeah, he told me he did, so I'll, he, something, something must be amiss. I'll follow up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about it so long as it gets done in the next uh, few days. <laughs> Otherwise, I got to do it myself, and I was going to get with you. Uh, AEM listings. How cool is this? <coughs> okay, so this is the, this is your e services is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So we're at this point right now, we have seven AEMs under this report. Um, please, please, please go to your units, ask them, their kids, the cadets, their their teachers at school, whatever. It's so easy to become an AEM member that it's almost criminal that we don't have a hundred in Hawaii. Um, but I know that it becomes a fact that they don't understand what they can get from it. And it seems like an administrative task. And for us to penetrate into the school system is kind of, it's, it's not that simple, but once we have people in there, then there's nothing precluding them from getting on board. And right now is the time to get AEM members. If you have cadet and they are in school, their teachers should be AEM members or science teachers good because they can order STEM kits right now. So the STEM kits are first come, first, first serve. Uh, at the region meeting, they said they're going to actually get another batch of money for the STEM kits to try and accommodate all those that are back ordered and ordered. But that doesn't mean that um, everyone, if you try and order a STEM kit in December, you might not be able to get it. So that concludes my uh, update. I think this is on Dave's one. I am done.